So just a, a technical note here, I can see Brian and nothing else. Brian can see me and nothing else. So anything at all that is happening in the room, we are fully oblivious to. So I don't know. I can, see a, I can see a live stream fail in the view that I've got. Oh, really? Oh, I definitely can't. OK, that's good. Yeah. Then you'll notice if somebody. Uh, uh, Upper right, there's a, there's a view button that maybe we can make you see different stuff. Can you to hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. But I can't see your slides. Just ah, yes. You. Now I can see the room as well. Yes. Just as you started screen sharing, but I can't see your slides. You cannot, cannot or can? It, I cannot. It says that you're screen sharing, but all we see is the fact that you're screen sharing and not actually see your slides. I could see them before, but not now. All right, let me no, try. No, I just, yeah. Share in. No, not I, good, Lee. I swear, everyone, this worked in testing, and that was only 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I think they're trying to fix it, but yeah, uh, Brian, maybe you should stop sharing and start, try to start it again. Okay, just stopped it, and then now I will start the share again now. There we go. Now I can see your slides too. Great. Woohoo! I think Computers. we <laughs> I think we can start. So hello everyone, welcome to the cloud services talk. Uh, Brian, do you want to introduce what we're doing? Yeah, yeah I'd like to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to say something that will maybe, maybe make sense. So, um, I'm, I'm Brian. Brian. Andrew is, is here with, with me on the remote end, and Tavi is there in the room, and we'll do a little deeper intros in a little, little, little bit, but um, we're here to, to talk about co-creating platforms and products, um, how, how uh, the, the team, the team that, that Andrew is Andrew's currently on have previously, previously been on, and shh, don't tell anybody, but Tavi may soon be on. on. Uh, cloud service services works works with uh, the technical community build and maintain in our cloud VPS environment, tool for storage, and much other stuff. Um, so since I said I said this, as anybody who doesn't doesn't know anything could come, I think we should start with a little bit about what what are we talking about about cloud services and uh, cloud services is. Um, it's a cloud hosting service that the Wikimedia Foundation runs on behalf of the Wikimedia movement. Um, an uh, OpenStack uh, uh, virtual virtu machine environment, and inside that, um, we run we run a lot of a lot of different pro pro projects. Community has a lot of different for projects. Well. Um, Kind of an interesting thing about how how important cloud services has been come to the move, movement is that uh, last month thirty one percent of global edits have from IP addresses that are inside our cloud. So that that's bots and tools, those things running inside cloud services that are going out and out and fixing up the wikis. And uh, I think that's that's pretty cool. Um, Two days ago, when I made these slides, these numbers might be a little off now. Off now but days ago, when I, when I made slides, we had 177 different projects in our OpenStack deployment. And inside those projects, there were almost 900 separate instance running, so separate virtual machines running. And one of those 177 projects is, is a project that we, we call Toolforge. And in that project, we had, uh, yeah, what do we got there? 3,160 host tools and uh, almost 2,500 uh, registered tool maintainers. Um, so 
if you want to learn, learn more about cloud services and, and, and a bunch of other things about, about how you can evolve, how you can use it, you can go to uh, wmcloud.org and that will redirect you into the right page on Wikitech that, that will we'll start to talk about a bunch of stuff. So when, when we say that, that we're building by staff volunteers and we're working together, we wanted to find some way to show that off a little. Um, so I did some looking through Git repositories and came up with this slide that had 90, 90 different names on it of, of people who have been us Git patches at some point in, in time um, that become part of um, up in infrastructure used to, to manage the virtual machines or, or other where that's deployed. Um, there's, there's more people than this. The, the, the true breadth of contributions is much larger than, than a Git repository search can do. do. Um, and the Git repository search wasn't exhaustive, but I wanted to give everybody watching just a little bit of an idea about, about many people we're talking about as we talk some more about how we work together. Um, and, and you might no notice the you who, who recognize some of these names might no notice that there are a number, number of current former uh, either Wikimedia Foundation or Wikimedia Media Deutsch employees on this list. And, and one of the things that I thought, that was interesting about that is that, is that most of these people who were employed or are employed now, now are not part of the cloud services team. Uh, uh, most of did it as as something that was was incidental as as, as users, basically, basically, just like the rest of the volunteer community. So when we talk about working together, talking about you know trying to collaborate to build better things to help everybody out. And we do that collaboration mostly like any open source software project would do, and most like y'all y'all do. We're working together together. Um, we use we use mailing lists. We have, we have mailing lists to to talk to each other either as users of the platform, or but we also have mailing lists to talk to talk to other maintainers of the platform. Um, we use IRC channels a lot. A lot of our of our conversations in IRC channels. Um, we use Fabricator, as as one might expect, to, to do a lot of tracking about our software and, and roadmap planning and, and uh, debating the, the right way to do various things. We use wiki pages uh, on, on the Wittech wiki. We have a whole, whole section where we make what we, what we call enhancement proposals, which are I, like big ideas about changing things, adding really, really cool things. Uh, we also use Wittech for, for a lot of um, interfacing announcements. Um, oops, oops. I went one slide too many. How do I, do I go back? There we go. Um, and we collaborate by a code code review. We, we share patches in Garrett and GitLab, sometimes even GitHub uh, for, for various projects that we run. Um, and then when we occasionally get to do even, even cooler, it's like have face-to-face -face sessions as at, at Hackathons and Wikimania. We're, most of us are remote in, in this one, but 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 uh, there are a bunch of us, us who are in, in Athens not too long ago and got some discussions in there. And, and then uh, we've been working on some experiments, uh, including a, a monthly video call where we we talk to uh, talk to each other um, specifically about a torch. We've been doing that for about six months now, I think. So now, finally, the place where we talk about who we are. We are. And um, I've been, been talking for a while. I'll, I will keep you for just a, just a brief minute more. My name is Brian Davis. I work for Comedia Foundation. I'm a principal software engineer. Um, pronouns are he, him. And I'm excited to be here with y'all. And maybe Andrew can introduce himself and, and that delightful partner he has at his keyboard right now. I can. Oddly, I cannot see my notes and see you at the same time. So I'll be frantically tabbing back and forth here. Uh, I am Andrew Bogat. This is Moose the Cat, who is not my cat, but is visiting and is a very yelly cat, so you'll hear him yell semi-constantly in the background. 
but I'm going to do my best to get him on the floor now. Uh, yeah, so I have been uh, working on the thing that is now called cloud services for about 12 years. I started not the day that it was created, but you know, a few months after that. Um, and that was doing VMs at the time, but now, of course, the, the project has grown into many other things. And uh, let's see, I worked in OSS things before that as well. So um, I think the prompt was how I became involved with the Wikimedia movement. And the answer to that is that, that literally the process was that I noticed that Wikipedia was not the most important thing in my life, but a thing that I was really relying on eight, 10, 12 times a day, every day. And so I just wrote to the Wikipedia people and said, hey, here are my skills, how can I help? And very, very gradually after a long time that a, a job sort of materialized around me. It was very nice. It was a much less formal foundation at the time than, than it is now. Um, and yeah, so so I do all this uh, operational SRE stuff with cloud services, uh, mostly the sort of bottom of the stack things. And I am an occasional contributor to English Wikipedia to the commons, mostly life science things, pictures, pictures of creatures and nature photos and such. Uh, let's see, I think we're missing Ife, so over to Tavi. Yes, hello, my name is Tavi Van and I don't work for the presentation at least yet. And I got involved in the space at, I think, start of 2020 from when Google was still running their coding event and I've been here ever since. I think we're missing you, Faye, or? Yeah, I think unfortunately, Faye didn't, didn't manage to show up to today, um, um, which is kind of a, kind of a bummer. Yife was, for, for me, Yife was Tavi, or Tavi was the new, new Tavi in our environment. Yife is, I don't know, first, first around 2000, well, maybe late 2014, 2015. Um, and, and did a lot, lot of stuff for tech support and wrote things and took over, over managing the, the quarry system and then rebuilt a whole bunch, bunch of it. And, and uh, he also ran a, a video to comment, comment project, uh, so several other, other things. And, and uh, say he grew up and he, he's a Google engineer. He isn't, he isn't around us anymore money more, but every once in a while he showed up and, and I'm really kind of hoping that he didn't, he didn't get to join. Um, but, but life goes on and we will have a conversation without it. So now, now we're at the part that I've been nervous about all week. We're going to have, have a panel discussion and I'm supposed to lead a discussion and participate in discussion. I've got some questions pre-made and, and if we run out of questions before, before we run out of time, we'll have Tavi pull audience there to, there to ask some more stuff. Um, <laughs> but, um, I think what what the, the first first question I wanted to, to, to give Andrew and, and Tavi a chance, chance to talk about Andrew already kind of did a little bit, um, but was, was to say how how you found cloud services, right? So um, um, for me. I, I was a, a, mem a member of the MediaWiki core team back back in the old days when we had, we had a MediaWiki core team, 2013, 2014 uh, timeframe. And, and um, the, what was then called, called the Lens environment um, was moving from, from the data center in Florida to the data center in Virginia. And it was moving pretty rapidly. There was like a two week window to get everything from one data center to the other. And so I jumped in to, to help uh, Antoine, to help Hashar start moving things across, across the, the CI system and, uh, and deployment prep projects, the, the, the beta cluster. And uh, yeah, that, that started first, first a hate, hate and then love and, and, and then an ongoing pursuit of this stuff. Maybe you could say say how how you wandered into the, into the cloud world. Yeah, uh, I was like late 2019 when Google was doing their coding event, which was this event they did to pull an open 
high school people to open source like kind of a mini version of the Google Summer of Code that they're still doing today. Uh, I got, I was, I, I, as Andrew said, was I am also, also like curious how Wikipedia was working on the inner side and Wikimedia was a GCI organization and that's like a lot of the, I was at the time mostly interested in doing media wiki core stuff, but there wasn't a lot of media wiki core stuff to do in GCI, so I got involved in some tools and just started from there. Andrew, you, you could reiterate your little origin story story. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I certainly didn't know that, that it existed until I was randomly hired to work on it. I was initially, well, so Ryan, it was, Ryan Lane's vision to to build uh, build this um, OpenStack cloud, uh, built out of donated but only sort of temporarily donated Cisco hardware, which then sort of haunted us later because we had to somehow return it to Cisco. Um, and uh, yeah, at the time he wanted a, a Python programmer just to gussy up OpenStack to work on OpenStack and add features that that we needed to make our cloud work as a public cloud rather than as a private cloud. So because our, our use cases are weird and different and remain somewhat weird and different. <laughs> so so yeah, I learned I learned about it because because suddenly I had a contract to make it do things. And uh, it was fun. Yeah. So um, the abstract for for this talk um, made a, a, a pretty bold claim that, that volunteers are co-equal with the foundation staff in planning, building, and maintaining things within Cloud BPS and Toolforge. And uh, I, I thought it might be interesting for us to talk, talk a little bit about whether we feel that that's, that, that's actually true, like how, that, that, that volunteers and staff are really, really equal or if it's it's a bit of an aberrational thing that, that that we try to try to keep keep in mind maybe don't quite like that way. at least on the technical level i yeah. would say definitely yes i've had like equivalent access to brian for a couple of years now and as of two days ago i think i had like Andrew's level of SRE access to the entire infrastructure. So people are very willing to give you access if you're doing things to help them, <laughs> turns out, since now they don't have to do it yourself. And as a, 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 most of the communication is also going on, on on public channels. So if you turn up and start to be helpful, people start to trust you and give you, let you do stuff. So I would say definitely yes. Yeah, I'm probably the, the the person in the worst position to know whether volunteers feel <laughs> co-equal or not because I I am the 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 have made the most arbitrary decisions probably in the history of the project. Um, it, it's always felt to me like the long-term future of cloud services was kind of inevitable. Like it's it's always seems sort of clear what the next thing that needs to happen is. The next feature set and the next stability and the next observability or whatever and so to that extent i can't say that we've ever consulted with volunteers about what's next but we barely consult with ourselves about what's next because we're all because you know we're right now we're racing to, to replace the grid and that's not because we made a strategic decision to shut down the grid it's because it was clearly inevitable <laughs> you know it, it was an externalities that meant that meant these things um I can easily imagine that our users and to some extent our volunteers feel like they're on a speeding train and that they didn't decide they didn't put down the tracks, right? But I don't know if it feels that way or not. Um, I really hope that in minor, that in, in incremental ways, in terms of what's actually happening today and what little decisions get made, I, I think that we include volunteers in those decisions mostly. Mostly, yes. Maybe there are people in the room there with with you, Tavi, who want to say that that they don't think that, and that that would be great because then we could learn from them about why they don't feel that way. I don't. No one's well, no one's here saying anything, so I'm taking that as no. 
No, nobody, nobody jumped and yelled and said, said we're all liars. That's good. Yeah. Um, I, so so I, I thought quite a bit about this um, in, in the lead up to this panel and, and I, I on, honestly had not coordinated with Tavi before and I was, I was glad when, when he said that the, the things that he said that he, that he thought at least, you know, you know, at a level of access and, and, and a technical decision level that, that, that were pretty, pretty were be cool. Um, um, I think I, I would add that, that Tavi helps remind us to be more equal sometimes. There, there, there are days when, when you know, like like in any collaboration and any that's got distributed members, right? There there are days when we accidentally leave somebody out of of, of a conversation or, or, or a decision. Tavi's been been really good at at both po pointing it out it happens and being gracious, accepting our, our apologies and, and, and trying to help us figure out a, a, a better way to move forward uh, the next time. Um, but I, I think part of it, it too, um, in, in thinking about it and, and in actually talking with Birgit about this a little bit as well, that at some level, I don't think we'll ever actually be cool. And here's, here's the part that I think inequality and, and is going to remain an inequality. It's accountability. So I get paid to do the things that I do here. Drew gets paid to do the things that he does here, and, and part of that getting paid, paid, part of being employed is that we have commitments to the Wikimedia Foundation, right? Like the Wik Wikimedia Foundation can cho choose to no longer employ us, to, to take away our money and, and um, tell us to go away. And and that, and that, that accountability is something that volunteers can't have, right? I can't fire a volunteer, and I, I would want to fire a volunteer, but I also can't, um, I can't force a volunteer to do, do something. Like, I can't, can't uh, I can ask, and I, I can control, and I, I can egg, <laughs> but ultimately, Tavi, Tavi, and, and gets to decide every day, every day whether, whether Tavi wants to show up and continue to help us or not. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that's, I think that's reasonable, reasonable and fair. I, like, I, I think, I think that's a thing that, that shouldn't be, be considered equal. Cool. Um, I shouldn't get to do just what the heck I want to do to do. And I shouldn't be able to force it off. Yeah. I mean, certainly there are, there's some aspect of our work that is toil that's, that's drud drudgery, right? And we wouldn't ask volunteers for the most part to do that. I also wouldn't ask a volunteer to carry a pager to receive middle of the night, you know, to wake up in the middle of the night to deal with the problem because that's, I mean, we're, we're paid to do the, to do the annoying bits and the hard parts. Um, the, the other thing that I've been thinking about with this question is time horizons. You know, I said that thing about feeling like, like everything is inevitable. I mean, Brian and I both have been involved in this project for 10, 10 years or 10 plus years. And that means that <laughs> it's easy for me to work on a thing because I know how it'll benefit me two years from now or three years from now. And, uh, you know, a lot of volunteers just want to fix, they want to scratch their itch. They want to fix their little thing and then go away, right? Um, or they're, you know, as Tavi is, they're students and they have other life events coming up and probably aren't doing multi-year commitments. And so the other, the other way, I, I don't think that there are a lot of examples of volunteers steering those very long-term multi-year decisions. And I don't think that that's because it would be unwelcome so much as it is just that that's, it seems like a lot to ask mm -hmm. from somebody who's doing it for fun. I think that's all I had to say on that topic. I have to look at my notes again. Oh yeah, I have the word power law written down in my notes, which I think is just saying that there are, you know, we're talking about Tavi and Ife who really are have, have worked essentially full time for months at a time on, on our projects. And they're the the tip of a of a pyramid, you know, that there there are also volunteers who have worked 
full time for a week. And then there are also volunteers who appear <laughs> and shepherd their little thing and then disappear for six months and then come back and then poke at their little thing and, and disappear. And I think rightly we accord different amounts of influence to those volunteers as well based on their uh, on their involvement. Um, yeah. I think that those, those, that answers Andrew that that, that that train of thought actually meshes really well with with one of the the, the question I got from 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 rolling around down on social media for things people might want want to hear about um, right? and Sumana who who used to be at at, at the foundation I, I think it was from like about 2011 through 2014 2015 just. Um, Basic developer advocate, right? And community community manager for the volunteer tech community. Um, anyway, she she asked uh, a question on social social that she she was curious whether as as a as a group in in cloud services, if we experience a, a thing thing that she's cadence share share, which is a whole lot, lot like a thing that I, I call impedance mismatch, um, which is kind of when when different parts of this of the group. Want, want to do different things at different speeds and, and that, that initially causes friction and then and then either dissolved nicely or doesn't get resolved nicely and i think um you know a lot of what Andrew was saying in there plays plays into that that um for me i think i i think it's sort of of my job uh, as, as one of the people who gets to do this stuff to find ways to accommodate a whatever working speeds people want to fall into your help are, are below. So um, if Tavi or Gay or Valhalla or, or SCA or any of the volunteers that we've had in the past Patan um, want to do something really fast and I think, I think it's my job to help get things out of their way so that they can do a thing really fast. And then I think that the flip that, you know, if I'm working on something in, in a volunteer capacity, things, things in life change, right? They got mm -hmm. final or they had a new, new for their household or they, they move houses or whatever, right? And, and they need to take, take some, some time away that we're all responsible for accommodating that. Right, and either yeah. step stepping to fill the gap if it's a thing that that needs to continue to happen on on, on a faster pace, or just making space for people to put put things down for a while, while and and then try to help them when they come back. I'm interested in in Tavi's thoughts about that. Like Tavi, do you in, intentionally like when you start to work on a thing, do you think, oh, this is this is a three week project and and so I will do it, or oh, this is a three year project and so I definitely will just leave it, <laughs> leave it alone. I just work on what I find interesting and for if there's a bigger project, usually I think we have like on on Dallas the testing environmental tools better. Usually it's easy to work something on like we can. I don't need your involvement during the development. Then I have like stack of 10 patches I can push to you and you can review those on your time. So usually I think they're actually not very often blocked on. I can't work on this thing because I haven't had reviews on this thing I was working earlier today. So it's easy to, for me to work on something and push it out for your reviews and come back later when it's all reviewed. And I imagine that one of the aspects of something being interesting is you being able to watch it do right. something right like you like you being able to experience the results of your work in yes. sometime soon rather than rather than being like oh now i've cleared the path to make andrew's life easier 18 months from now like that's yeah seems, that's inherently less interesting right yeah it's much more interesting if something happens now and not in three years time when we're changing b to c and yeah and and I try to prioritize volunteer patches for that reason, like to, to be like, oh, the iron the iron is hot. You know, the, I'm going to review volunteer patches before I review staff patches because I am the volunteers might get bored and leave, and the staff is less likely to do that. And I and I hope that that 
that's maybe aspirational. I imagine that I do that, but I, I hope that I hope that it feels that way on your end as well. That most of you, when, when you're waiting for a thing, somebody is like, "Oh, Tommy's Tommy's waiting for this," and then yeah. we we hop to it. Also, very common for me to when I'm done with one thing, I'm move to something else and come back later when it can take a while for review, but I have something, something completely different that I'm now interested in. I'm not in, no more interested in working on this other thing. And then it's take me a while to get back after you reviewed and to fix stuff and get stuff merged. Yeah, I certainly know as a volunteer myself and other projects that like time to review is number one feature and whether I stay engaged or not. Like yes. it's very easy to just get bored and forget if a, if a patch sits around for too long. If it takes too long, I just move to something completely different and maybe come back a month later or when I when that's interesting again. Cool. Um, um, let's see, we've got, got like 10 minutes left. We got so much time. We, we could talk about a thousand thing, things in tents, right? Um, Look at look at looking at the list of questions I had queued up. I think I think maybe the next one that might be interesting to, to ask is is if if, if uh, people have ideas of this about changes that we might might make um, changes in, in policy or changes in practices that we do that that feel like they they'd be a good good experiment making it e easier for. Um, for us to collaborate together, or or maybe even for us to attract more more volunteers to help out. Yeah, the foundation Slack is definitely one thing that causes controversy quite often, since they have been, I think several cases where someone comes up to you on Slack and hey, how do I do things? They can. Then you push something through and I'm just what's the context and I don't have any context when everything is somewhere private. So like you, when something comes from the community, it's on the public channel that usually I can't see, but sometimes request from the foundation is from coming from a private channel. I don't we could the, maybe we could push those to more push those to public channels so everyone can get involved. Yeah, that's basically what I wrote down too. It's not so much a thing that we can change as a change that we can resist, right? Is that as as more and more communication moves into different disparate wall gardens, that we can we can say, no, no, that's not. I mean, Brian and I both have said it a thousand times about Slack. That's not where our team is. <laughs> our team isn't. Our team is not all staff. Therefore, they don't have access to Slack. We cannot move our work there because our team cannot follow us there. <laughs> and and. So far, that's we've been able to to, to say that and, and follow through, um, and that's true about Fabricator as well. But you're right; more and more information vanishes behind behind privacy walls. Yeah. I don't think I would be here if cloud admin and IRC would be a thing. Yeah. I mean, the, the flip side to that is that I'm concerned that IRC is very arcane, right? Like that yeah. that that you seem comfortable there, and yeah. if you know, if I were going to answer this later question about how to advise somebody who's interested in getting involved, like lurk on IRC a whole lot, but that's a lot that's a lot to ask of somebody who doesn't naturally function in that kind of chat environment. Um, but I don't really know. Nobody is clear on what the next open communication forum is after IRC. Yeah. I mean, there are many competing ones. Yeah, I think that's, that, that, that's a ch challenge on the scope that, that of, of time that we have here to solve, solve for sure. But um, I, th th thanks for bringing that out, Tavi, because I, and, and, and reinforce it, because I think that's a, that's a really, really good. And I think, I think we, even on IRC, we sometimes catch ourselves hanging out in invite light only channels and talking to each there to right before where somebody goes, oh, oh, wait, shouldn't we be talking? We're not talk talking about scary secret things that we have to keep, keep private. We should go 
back back to the the admin channel or back to, back to the, the 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 end end user channel, one or the other, to keep talking about these things. And, and in fact, a question that I added to our annual survey is basically, where are you people? Where do you talk to each other? And, and I keep hoping that, it's, that, that some year the survey will come back and, it, and we'll say, oh, it turns out that 70% of our users are all in this channel on Discord, and then we will follow. Like, we will cheerfully go to whatever public channel our users are in. It's just that right now, the internet is too fractured for it to be at all clear where that somewhere is. Uh, well, we're getting we're getting down to the end now. I guess with about about four, three or four minutes left, so so maybe we should jump to that to that that last question you you kind of tease there, Andrew. Andrew is the what what advice would would any of us give to to someone who's inter interested in getting involved down down deep right this infra infrastructure layer of of the cloud projects, and I I, I think I'm especially interested interested here, but what uh, Tavi thinks <laughs> is the path into doing that. My view is to find something that's interesting to know you're not, you're not just something that's marked as a good first bug, because if, for example, if it's a bug that's been annoying you or a feature that you would find yourself useful, then it's much more, you're much more motivated to work on it and it's also easier to get started on when you maybe have a clear vision of how this should work or instead of a generic fabricator's task of this would be a good thing for newcomer, but and it's also much less work on us. We don't have to curate that list of good first bugs or answer generic questions on how do I get started on this very large space. Oh, oops, on this very large space. I absolutely agree with that, that, that the, the volunteers who's, who stick around are the ones who show up mad about something. The volunteers who show up and say, what can I do to help? You know, we can we can answer that question, but that's it's not that's not nearly as motivating as having having a thing that is clearly annoying to them and that they want to fix. Um, but as you said, Fabricator does have. I mean, it's full of little things that need fixing. So certainly, people can lurk in Fabricator and IRC until they notice a thing that they want to sink their teeth into. So I, I, I think what I hear both of you saying in, in, in about the same way, slightly different words, is the the classic line of scratch your own itch, right? Yes. But find find a thing that you're ha happy to do, or a thing that you're happy to make make go away, <laughs> and start there. Um, and they kind of shout. Uh, um, I, I think. Uh, one of the things that, that that makes me most no noticeable and and reach out to them and ask, hey, hey, do you, you want mates? Do you want to do more things? Do you, you want to help more? Is 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 notice people who are um, who are helping others use the platform, right? Like pe people who are answering questions on 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 wiki tech, tech wiki on our irc channels on our mailing lists on our fabricator tasks like people who are, who are spontaneously helping out that way right mm -hmm. um, are, are are often people that i first think about when i'm look, looking out and going boy it would really be nice if we had some more fingers just to put on boards right now and, and uh, so it if, if you've been to catch somebody's eye and you haven't yet, that's that's another potential thing. And, and also, this is maybe too little too late, but I want to emphasize how much doc writing is a important part of volunteer contribution to our projects. You know, Brian had that list of volunteers that, that had contributed to, to get things. And I have a whole other list that is similarly long that's people who never showed up and get, but who have edited our, our volunteer docs and our, and our technical docs. Um, and sometimes the process of documenting a thing causes you to notice what's wrong with it, and then that's that's an entree into doing development work as well. Yeah, starting with support and documentation is a great a great way to to start without having to understand the stack. You can just have a user's perspective and still be very useful to the to the projects.
Nobody's yelling in my ear yet that we're supposed to get off stage. Night Primer is traveling in two minutes, but yeah, I think we're starting to run out of time. Okay. Um, well, any any last in, anything that, that that folks want to say? Some, something that they had in their notes to get it out for the question or something that we didn't get to? Or I think we have one in. So do we, or you can also come talk to me later if you want. I'm interested in what tools and skills will be used more in two years by folks than they are now. Like Could you talk to the microphone? We can't hear you if you're not talking to the microphone. Uh, tools and skills will be used Recording more in two stopped. years, like Kubernetes or uh, other things I don't know about. What do you all disagree about its future? Yes, Kubernetes. Of course, like one of our goals is to make it so you don't have to understand those technologies. But yeah, Kubernetes is on tool for growing, and I think Cloud VPS will like to stay on OpenStack for a long time. But we don't, also the industry is moving very fast. We don't yet know what's the modern thing in two years. But our goal is so that you don't have to understand what the technologies are as a user. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, let's talk later. I think we're running out of time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my, my last words are just, we are interested in, in talking about this in the abstract, and also we're interested in, in having people contribute. And so anybody who's following along or listening should should get up in our in our faces. Like, we, we want to hear from you. We want to help. We want to know what's wrong. We want to know what's right. We, we aspire to to be engaged and responsive. So, so please, please continue this discussion in any in any venue and any time, and we'll almost certainly be interested in talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is this is why we have this is especially Brian. Well, maybe not especially, but like this is this is our thing. This is why this is the project that we're committed to is because of this yeah. porous porous community nature. It's 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 what makes it fun. Yeah, but I think we're out of. Time, so thank you everyone for coming here and yeah, please come talk to us later if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you everyone and thank you, Tavi.